What's the one thing you know? <laughs> Jesus will never fail you. Shall we rise up for a moment? We're going to pray together and then we get into the word. Father, in the name of Jesus, we bless your name at this time. I will pray, Lord, that your power will not fail your children. We ask you, Lord, that great, mighty things will do in every life in Jesus' name. Open the eyes of understanding of everyone. That we will see why we're here at this time, what you want to do at this time, and what you are going to accomplish in every life. We pray, Lord, great, great things you will do. And what you do here will last us for this life and go through eternity. We bless your name because we know your will not fail. You cannot fail. This is our day. You are going to bless your children. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you very much, you can see that. I want you to recall those words that a mother in the Lord ended with. You can. You will. I join to that. You must. I can. I will. I must. I can do what he says I can do. I will do what he says I will do. I must do what he says I must do. His grace is sufficient for you in Jesus' name. I want to talk to you this morning concerning something very important. It goes through life. And I make, I make this the great exchange. The great exchange for a great future. The great exchange for a great future. As you think about life, life is all about exchange. Why did I go to school? I wanted to exchange my ignorance for knowledge. Why do I turn on the lights when I get home? I want to change my darkness for light. And why do I put on the fan of the aircon? It's hot and I want to exchange the heat for some cold. Why do I put on clothes at all? You want to exchange nakedness for being closed. Why do you eat to exchange your hunger or something to satisfy you? Why do you do whatever you do is an exchange? And so as you think about life, it's all about exchanging one thing for the other. And whatever state we ever get to, it is an exchange. And we need to think about that from God's perspective. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 53. And I read here from verse 4. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 4. It says, surely he has borne our griefs. There's an exchange going on here. He didn't have any sorrow, any shame, any grief, and any kind of a problem. We had the problems. And then he came to this world and he made a great exchange. He has borne our griefs. He has carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgression. He was wounded for our transgression. He had no transgression. We had all the transgressions. And then he had the triumph. He gave us his triumph. And then we gave him a transgression. We gave him a weakness. He gave us his strength. We gave him a sickness. And he gave us his health. We have given him our guilt. And he has given us his innocence. We have given him our condemnation. He has given us his justification. We gave him our shame. He has given us his honor. We gave him our slavery and captivity. He has given us his uh, freedom. He grants us life. And now, henceforth and forever, we can have the joy of the Lord. It's all an exchange. And it is because of that exchange we are here. And I pray that you'll understand so that his strength will come into your life in Jesus' name. All we had before he came was sin. And all he had before we came to him was righteousness. He had no sin. We had all the sin. He has righteousness. He had no sin at all. And then we came to him and a great exchange took place. We gave him our sins and uh, he, gave he, he gave us his righteousness. The point is many people go to church. And they never make any exchange. They come in the way they were and they go out the way they came. Because they do not understand this great exchange you are talking about. 
We call this exchange many names. We call it salvation. Where you give him your sin and he gives you his righteousness. We call it healing. Where you give him your sickness and he gives you his self. We, we call it deliverance. When you, go, when you give him your own kind of affliction and he gives you the dominion. And we call it eventually heaven. When he gives you his heaven and then you give him your own hell. That's a great exchange. And that's why there's a, the prophet here tells us, he says, he was wounded for our transgressions. And then he says, he was bruised for iniquities. He says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, tell me the rest. Yeah. We're healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. And we have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him. You see that the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. It is this great exchange the Old Testament spoke about and the New Testament also affirmed in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm reading here from verse 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, you see the great exchange here. It says, for he has made him to be seen for us. Those two words, for us, for us, for you in particular. He made him to be the sin offering so that then he says who knew no sin that he that we might be made the righteousness of god in him you see how the verse starts the verse starts of sin it says he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin and then the verse ends with the righteousness it says so that we might become or be made the righteousness of god in him there's an exchange right there as you look at this exchange there are three things that come out very clearly number one is a great substitution the great substitution number two is a great separation number two is a great separation and then number three is a great sufficiency the great sufficiency as we look at them one by one you have the great substitution now, because it says it was for us, he did what he did. He died for us. And he's living now for us. He's making intercession for us. And everything he does now, everything we receive, we receive from him and through him because of what he did for us. There's a beautiful story in Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, the great substitution. Here we're looking at verse 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Isaac did not know that the father was going to sacrifice him unto God. And, I, and Abraham himself had not told Isaac what God had told him. And he got there eventually, laid him on the altar. And then Isaac just realized, okay, I'm the sacrifice for today. I have to die today. Why am I dying? Isaac, you don't understand this. And you'll not understand until we come to the new covenant and the new testament. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And then not only that, the wages of sin is, tell me, yeah. death. And so Isaac represents humanity. He was to die and then he was laid on the altar. And then the voice came from heaven and said abram abram and he looked up and said here am i don't touch that child and then when he looked there was a ram waiting for him already that's a great substitution behold the lamb of god that taketh away the sin of the world you should have died but then as you are to be executed because of your sin as the punishment was to come upon you here comes jesus christ the lamb of god that takes away your sin and the moment you realize that and like isaac you come out of that altar of death and then there's a replacement there is a substitution you say praise the lord i got something you've got it already because Jesus did that on the cross of Calvary. As we come to verse 8, he says, Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a bunch of rain. So they went both of them together. 
As we look at that verse of scripture, uh, let's read. There are two things we need to understand here in verse 8. Look at verse 8 again. It says, And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a bunch offering. What was the meaning of that? It's going to provide. There's going to be a substitution. And he himself is the one to provide the lamb for the bunch offering. You see, there are many religions. It's like society provided that leader of religion. Think about this religion or that religion or that religion. They're the product of society. The product of humanity but jesus christ was provide, provided by god behold my beloved son in whom i will please and then god is as provided him god will provide himself a lamb for a bunch offering that's something but there's another side to this look at that verse again and abraham said my son god will provide himself a lamb for a bunch offering that means we are putting a punctuation mark between himself and a lamb. How do you do that? Oh, because when the Bible was written, there were no punctuation marks. When the Bible was written, they just wrote in Hebrew and Greek. They just wrote like that. And now to make it sensible, understandable, we have to put some of these marks there. And so when you read, God will provide himself. God will provide himself. How do I understand that? His name shall be called Emmanuel. What's the meaning of Emmanuel? God with us. God will provide himself. And himself is the lamb for the bond offering. Have you noticed in the Bible, God the Almighty said, I'm the first and the last. And Jesus Christ, talking to the church in Asia Minor, he says, I'm the first and the last. And God says in Isaiah, I'm the beginning, I'm the end, and the last as well. And then, jesus christ said i am the beginning i am the last and then when jesus talks about himself he said i am in fact he says in john chapter 8 verse 24 except you believe that i am you will not be saved you're perishing your sin because he is the great i am unto us a child is born unto us a son is given his name shall be called wonderful his name shall be called the prince of peace and his name shall be called the everlasting father a might the mighty god god will provide himself he is god i said he is god in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father come back to that verse again my son god will provide himself give me a good amen, amen. a lamb for a bunch of his soul the wage both of them together what a joy you have that it's not just an ordinary man that make this great exchange with you it's the almighty god himself that says i'll take your place and then you can take my place you give me what you have i don't have anything lord all i have is sin all right give me that and i will give you what i have he'll give you his righteousness today the transaction is done in jesus name and that's why it says oh what a wonderful wonderful day when the great transaction was made that means the great is a business transaction that i give him this and he gives me that and you're going to explain that more in your life in jesus name and they came in verse 9 to the place which god had told him of and abram abram built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood and abram stretched forth his side and took the knife to slay his son and the angel of the lord called unto him out of heaven and said abraham abraham and he said here i am here am i and he said lay not thy hand upon the child neither do thou anything unto him for now i know that thou fearest god seen thou hast not withheld thy son thy only son for me and abraham lifted up his eyes and looked and behold behind him a ram caught in a ticket by his arms and abraham went and took the ram and offered him up a bond offering in the stage instead of his son 
That's the great exchange instead of his son. And let's look at Exodus chapter 12. Exodus chapter 12, the great substitution. As he came out of that place and he said, There was a substitution. I'm not living on this other side of death. It's like the old me has died. And what you see now is the new me. By, by the time you come out of this place, the old self would have died. Because a great exchange, the old self that is connected with shame and sorrow and uh, being connected with ignorance and connected with weakness and sickness, all that old self, we're going to get rid of that today. And then a new you, like a new icy, coming and saying, I've been at the altar. I came out of that altar. There was a great substitution. And I start substitution for my life. It will be for your life as well in Jesus' name. Exodus chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 12. Exodus 12, verse 12. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, and against all the gods of Egypt. I will execute judgment. I am the Lord, and the blood shall be to you for a token, for a sign, for a symbol upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. That's a great exchange. And that's a great substitution. They had to slaughter an animal. Kill that animal. Why? Because Christ Jesus had not come. Just like there was a lamb in the Old Testament in Genesis. Now there is a lamb that is slain. And it is slain for every family. When you think about the story of the lamb. In Genesis it was a lamb for an individual. In Exodus it was a lamb for a family. Each family taking a lamb. Well by the time you get to Leviticus. It's now a lamb for the nation. For the nation. Because it is a blood that makes atonement for the soul. And then you go on you come to Isaiah it's not a lamb it's not just for the nation but for the whole world you come to John and it says behold the lamb of God that takes away the sin of what of the whole world from the individual to the family to the nation to the world by the time you come to Revelation chapter 5 it's a lamb for the whole universe it says the book was closed and sealed and there was nobody to open the book and then it says I was uh, I was so uh, sorrowful and then I began to weep and then uh, somebody told John and angel just said don't weep because the lamb has prevailed and then he says I look when I looked I saw the lamb and then is the lion of the tribe of Judah and as we travel through the whole Bible, God has provided himself a lamb for the sacrifice. And that's why we can say, I rejoice because there is this great substitution. When I see the blood, I will pass over you. Give me a good amen. In Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 8. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. This great substitution. He took your sin and then he gave you his righteousness. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. He said, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died. Tell me the last two words there. Christ died. Christ died. Personalize it now. Christ died for me. That's a great substitution. He has done it and it will not be undone again in Jesus name. Number two is the great separation. The great separation because of this great exchange. It now brings us to a peculiar place, to a special place. And then it says whatever is happening to other people who have not made this great exchange will not happen to us. Have you noticed that you know that there's a great separation whenever there's a great exchange? Let's say for example, uh, you have not uh, been to school. You'll be in this class of people and we'll say they are illiterate, they are ignorant, they might be farmers in the farm or whatever they are. They you went to school and because of exchanging ignorance for knowledge by the time you come out of school you are separated and there's nothing you can do about that you cannot be the way you were before and be with the people you were you were with before because it that great exchange separated you the same thing for the children of israel when god came to them and said when i see the blood i will pass over you they were separated from the egyptians and that's the reason why they were, they were called out of Egypt to go into the land of Canaan. A great separation 
great separation. Many people don't understand that. In fact, that's why many people, they pray and pray and pray. The sin they were separated from. And they're still saying, oh Lord, uh, have mercy on me because of this, because of this. And can I just tell you that for hundreds of years, centuries, the children of Israel were under the Egyptians. And when, G, when the Lord said, when I see the blood, I will pass over you. They came out of Egypt. From that time, the Egyptians were no more a problem to them. They were separated from Egypt. And from the time you get born again, all the things of the world, I'm talking of the sickness and the curse and the calamity and the, all the evil things, if you knew the truth, you will know that you are separated away from them already. The diseases of Egypt, I'm separated from them. The curse of Egypt, I'm separated from them. All the Pharaoh and the chariots of Egypt, I'm separated from them. And eventually for the Lord to make it very practical, he did something. He said, I'm going to pass through through the water. And then he came to the Red Sea. And then they passed over. Now that Red Sea can divide in a very practical way, in a very pointed way, in a way that is unforgettable. The children of Israel on this side of the Red Sea, and then the rest of the Egyptians on that side, and Pharaoh and all his chariots, where were they? Inside the Red Sea, they were dead. You know, when you went through the water of baptism, it was a symbol. Many people don't understand. They just say, they have been baptized in water. And I say, what does that mean? It means that all the Egyptians and all the Pharaohs and everything buried in the water of baptism. And therefore, all the cause some people after they've been saved and baptized in water, they're still saying, Pastor, pray for me. They say, Yoke. I said, Which yoke? That one should be under the water of baptism. And then they say, All the cause and say, That should be under the water already. You're on this other side already. You are separated from them in Jesus' name. And that's what Jesus said, You shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Thank God I know the truth today. I said I know the truth today. You see some parts of our families extended from it on the other side. And you know, you are here on this other side. If uh, you know the other side of the family is still in Egypt, if they have cancer, I'm separated from that. If they have tuberculosis, I'm separated from that. If they have all these uh, evil problems, you know, something pressing them, something walking over their body, I'm separated from that. There's a great separation. And this day you realize that you are free in Jesus' name. Uh, let's look at it one by one. I'm looking at Exodus chapter 8. Exodus chapter 8. We're looking at verse 22. Very important verse of scripture. Exodus chapter 8 verse 22. Separation. I will serve in that day the land of Goshen, in the which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there to the end. Thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Even before they got to that, chapter 12, it says all the swarms of flies will be in the land of Egypt, in Goshen, where my people are living, there will be no single fly. Let's look at uh, chapter 9, verse 4. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is of the children of Israel. That's a great separation we're talking about. Look at verse 6. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow. And all the cattle of Egypt died, but of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. Not one. You will live long. If the, if the cattle of the, of the Israelites even enjoyed the protection and they enjoyed the separation we're talking about, how about you? You are going to enjoy yours in Jesus' name. Chapter 10, verse 22. Chapter 10, verse 22. He's talking about the separation and Moses stretched forth his son toward heaven and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt. Three days. And they saw no one. They saw not one another. Neither rose from uh, any from his place for three days but all the children of israel had light in their dwellings chapter 8 is separation chapter 9 separation and then chapter 10 separation let's look at chapter 11 separation again the lord in every chapter of your life from today he will separate you from the evil 
all those calamities you know you are at this stage you are separated from them at that stage you are separated from them that's how we enjoy the perfect tales of the lord because of this separation the substitution force number one day number two is the separation number three is uh, the sufficiency you'll find the lord sufficient to your life in jesus name chapter 11 verses 6 and 7 it says and there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of egypt such as there was there was none like it nor shall be like it anymore but against any of the children of israel shall not a dog move a stone against man or beast that ye may know how that how that the lord does put a difference the lord does put a difference between the egyptians and israel it has happened already Amen. look at chapter 14 chapter 14 i'm reading from verse 19 chapter 14 verse 19 says and the angel of the lord which went before the camp of israel removed and went behind them and the pillar of cloud went from before their face and stood behind them and it came between the camp of the egyptians and the camp of israel and it was a cloud and darkness to them darkness to the egyptians but it gave light by night to these that is to the israelites so so that the one came not near the other all the night do you know they'll never come near you again those magicians and those evil powers there's a separation already they will not come in jesus name exodus chapter 15 i'm reading from verse 26 exodus chapter 15 we're looking at verse 26 a great separation it severs you from the calamities of the people he said and said if thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which are brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. The separation is there. Their sicknesses will not be upon you, their calamities will not be in your life because of that separation. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 26. Separation. Leviticus chapter 20. Verse 26, and ye shall be holy unto me, for I am the Lord, for I the Lord am holy, and I've severed you, I've separated you, I've taken you away from the other people that ye should be mine. There's a verse of scripture you must you must know, you must mark it in your Bible, you must store it in your heart because in the coming days you will need this verse i'm looking at it now in psalm 125 psalm 125 psalm 125 we're looking at verse 3 psalm 125 verse 3 before i read it i want you to say this is mine i said this is mine everywhere go anywhere go this will be yours in jesus name psalm 125 verse 3 for the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lord of the righteous Amen. the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lord of the righteous Amen. are the righteous here today yes. where are they how did you become righteous remember he that knew no sin god made him to be the sin offering so that we might become tell me the righteousness of god in him is the exchange is the substitution that made you the righteousness of god and it says over here that the lord of the wicked the lord of the wicked will not fall upon you in the day in the night you are free Amen. on the campus in the community you are free Amen. while you're still a student and when you pass out and you are going to pass out in, in real flying colors and when you come out you're free in jesus name you will enjoy the work of your hand look at isaiah chapter 65 it's the great separation It's the great separation isaiah chapter 65 and i'm reading from verse 13 and verse 14 isaiah 65 reading from verse 13 therefore thus says the lord god behold my servant shall eat but he shall be hungry look at that separation 
and he says behold my servant shall drink but he shall be thirsty behold my servant shall rejoice but he shall be ashamed it tells us coming from genesis all through to the old testament he says there is this separation and many people do not know that they still carry the burden of egypt on them you are going to drop everything today in verse 14 behold my servant shall sing for joy of heart but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and ye shall howl with vexation of spirit then we're looking at malachi chapter 3 malachi chapter 3 the great separation malachi chapter 3 verse 18 then shall ye return and discern between the righteous and the wicked between him that serveth god and him that serveth him not point number three now is the great sufficiency the great sufficiency there will be no lack in your life anymore no loss in your life anymore no limitation in your life anymore you're going to find the lord sufficient all you need is a great exchange because there's no lack in christ and there's no there's no limitation in christ there's no loss in christ and you've come to exchange your want your scarcity with his abundance we're looking at romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 i'm reading here from verse 32 romans chapter 8 we're looking at verse 32 it says in verse 32 verse 32 here's what it says he that spared not his own son but delivered him up for us all for how many of us oh. i said for how many of us oh. for us all are you part of this yes. i said are you part of this he delivered him up for us all how shall he not with him also freely give us how many things oh. how many things do i have today oh. when you pray how many of your prayers will god answer in when he says all things for your spirit all things for your body all things for your profession all things for your academic all things for anything and everything just name it and claim it and it is yours in jesus name because he says he'll freely give us all things all things all things i'm looking at second peter chapter one second peter chapter one and here i'm reading from verse three and verse 4 it says according as his divine power not according to the provision of my parents or the provision of uh, my helpers my helpers or my benefactors but according to his uh, divine power he has given unto us all things he has given unto me what all things that pertaineth or that pertain unto life and to godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss i've escaped already Amen. i said i have escaped already Amen. i have escaped already you have escaped all those calamities in jesus name you know that that you can be healthy for the rest of your life provided for for the rest of your life victorious for the rest of your life triumphant for the rest of your life and that all your prayers from today can be answered by the lord look at first john chapter three first john chapter three first john chapter three i'm reading from verse 22 and whatsoever we ask we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things which are pleasing in his sight whatsoever we ask we receive of him Amen. you believe that yes. make it personal say that again say that again Uh, you know sometimes the way our mind was that's why the bible talks about renewing the mind renewing the mind sometimes you'll be negative all through your life and your life has a negative slant I, I never get anything you know i'm not happy i'm not i don't have this i don't have that i think it's my background i have this dream i have this oppression i have this attack and the more you say that the more those things find you but then you begin to say oh i realize something now whatsoever i ask i receive of him and your mind say ah 
you, you, you think like that and then you say that again whatsoever i ask i receive of him and then your mind is working you say it looks like it might happen then you say it again whatsoever i ask i receive of him all right i think is it may happen today whatsoever i ask i receive of him all of a sudden something has changed on the inside a great exchange has taken place your weakness has now become strength and your doubting before has now become faith and now you can really say it with confidence and assurance i know that whatsoever i ask i receive of him can you say it with confidence now you exchange your emptiness with his fullness you exchange your transgressions for his holiness you exchange your infirmity with his wholeness. You exchange the curse for his intervention. You exchange everything negative for everything positive. You exchange your failure with his success. And you exchange your nothingness with his all sufficiency. Now I can do all things. Now I will do all things now i must do all things i'm not afraid of any subject any lecturer any situation any class any circumstance because now i can i said i can i said i can and now i will i said i will and then i say i must i wake up in the morning and then while i want to you know clean my teeth and brush i stay before that mirror and i look at that person in the mirror i say today you can i look at the person in the mirror i don't look now i don't look this way and that way i want to pump some assurance into this person i see the mirror i say you can i say you will i say you must I said bye bye i'll see you again i bring back the certificate because i will anybody there why are you why don't you stand up like somebody who knows i will somebody who knows i must somebody who knows i can it will be done it will be done open your mouth and talk to the lord in prayer this great exchange jesus is mine salvation is mine jesus is mine his redemption is mine. His power is mine. His authority is mine. His goodness is mine. There's a great exchange. No weakness anymore. I give him my weakness. He gives me his strength. No sin anymore. I give him my sins. He gives me his righteousness. No lack no loss no limitation i give him my lack he gives me sufficiency no fear i give him my fear he gives me his courage now i have power a great exchange I have it in the name of the Lord I can in the strength of the Lord I will in the plan of God for my life I must no sickness will hinder you as a great exchange you cross over this side after the Red Sea and those Egyptians cannot cross the Red Sea to come touch your life. Impossible. Impossible. All those Egyptians that tried to cross the Red Sea to get to the children of Israel, they were drowned. Now you are free. Now you are free now you're free in jesus name we pray victorious children of god in jesus name we pray i am saved i am healed
I am delivered. I am separated from the world. I am separated from my sicknesses. From now on, I am well. I am made whole. My inner man is strong. Anywhere I go, power will go with me. Success will go with me. I will come out successful. Because, because the great transaction has been made. I've given him all my failures. I have his victory. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Raise up the hand of victory. Joy. Power. Authority. Healing. Deliverance. Success. Sufficiency. In all our lives in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the great exchange. We thank you for the great substitution. We thank you for the great separation. We thank you for the great sufficiency. Lord, I confirm on every brother, every sister here today, all these blessings of the Lord in Jesus' name. Let the joy of salvation fill your soul. Let the joy of that healing and wholeness fill you right now in Jesus' name. Every sickness, every infirmity, I cut off from your life. You are separated from them in Jesus' name. You are healed. You are delivered. You are provided for. As you go, go in the strength of the Lord. And I release everyone to your success. Every one of you are released to victory. Lord, put testimony in every mouth. No lack, no loss, no limitation. The sufficiency of the Lord go with you everywhere. Everywhere you go, He'll never fail you. Every dream He has put in your heart, you'll accomplish it. From now on, you are the head and not the tail. And God will confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord, because we know it's done. In Jesus' name we pray. Say this after me. Because of Jesus. Because of Calvary. Because of the great exchange. I can. I will. I must. I'll meet you on the mountaintop. top. 